On Fridays, among the luminaries who visit us is uh, this guy. He, when it comes to movies, music, uh, anything funky. In fact, we have a picture I will show you off of his Instagram in a moment. Uh, he's the culture blaster across social media. And you can find his stuff in the Marina Times as well. The amazing one who comes and goes on a rainbow. How about it for Michael Snyder? <laughs> Trick or treat, everyone. It's Halloween. It is. That delightful nexus of mischief and costume parties mm -hmm. that so many of us eagerly mm -hmm. anticipate and love so much. Nexus of Dingworth. It's creepy and it's spooky, mysterious and ooky. Thank you, Adam's family. Oh. Um, although October 31st is actually this coming Tuesday, the celebration is going to last from tonight until All Hallows' Eve itself, then All Saints' Day on November 1st, and then Day of the Dead on November 2nd, El Dia de los Muertos. Oh, you uh, see Great like parades table. in San Francisco and Los Angeles for uh, Day of the Dead. So a happy Halloween to all, wherever you are, mm. and whatever you do, let's keep it Halloween. Well, and uh, before, and speaking of Halloween, uh, Albert, do you have the picture that we got off of Vince's Instagram? The uh, picture that Michael posted is of uh, two artists are those artists who are those people well um, um on the left is barbara lou a terrific performance artist from san francisco mm -hmm. and to the right is the great gina shock uh drummer for the go-go's uh an author photographer and now collaborating on these lovely kinetic glisse uh, paintings that basically show the kinetic power of her drumming and there was a show at um, music head gallery in los angeles last night and, uh, you know, uh, I know both of these women for many, many years, and they are um, absolute talents and, and lovely people. And it that's was, what I'm talking about. So, Kim, look at those people. They're funky. They're cool. They're that, uh, you know what I'm talking about. That is Michael Snyder's stream that he swims in. Hey, hey, come on, man. No, it's true. You're you're a cool, you're super cool. I don't think it's a, it's a good thing. I'm saying I, I'm envious of your hipness. We do what we can. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> dude, this reminds me, if you're driving this weekend, don't do much of the Halloween, okay? Just stay off the Halloween. All right, okay, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I'm yeah. thinking of dressing up uh, as what is now a middle-of-the-road Republican. Easy costume, white sheet and a hood. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I get what you mean. By the oh, way, okay. is it ironic that a guy named Mike Johnson wants to control everybody's Johnsons, or is it me? I see what you're doing, yes. I don't know. So we want to talk about film and TV and music and... Yeah, uh, again, the great Gina Shock. Lovely to check in with her. We've known one another for a number of years, and and she is a uh, an incredible talent. And that was a lot of fun. But we do have new movies, uh, and let's kick things off with a film entitled "The Holdovers." And I, you know, it doesn't sound auspicious particularly, but when I saw yeah. um, that the filmmaker was Alexander Payne, I was. Let me into this screening. Um, his serial comic movie, Election, about an ambitious and conniving high school girl running for class president, uh, with a young Reese Witherspoon as the girl and Matthew Broderick as the teacher who that tries to stop her. Brilliant a, movie. Unscrupulous campaign. That's Alexander Payne. Unscrupulous. I, I saw that movie and I was bowled over about how clever and insightful it was on the subjects of human foibles um, and, um, and how it landed. Foibles. Skates scathing shots at certain uh, uh, inherent flaws in our political uh, system at large. His other movies, particularly uh, Citizen Ruth, uh, about Schmidt, Sideways, The Descendants in Nebraska, oh, no, right, less, right, right. no less astute, um, humane and witty. And now Payne has brought us what might be one of my favorite uh, of his films, and uh, wow. certainly one of the better movies of the year to date, the holdovers. Okay, we wanted to give you a little backstory because I want people to know Alexander Payne is a talent, and he oftentimes uh, writes the scripts of the movies he directs. In this case, he didn't, but that doesn't make it any less wonderful. Uh, the year is 1970. It's late December and time for Christmas break at a New England prep school, as is sometimes the case. Not all the students are able to go home for the holidays. In this situation, Four must stay behind, and one of the most mean-spirited and generally disliked teachers at the school, Professor Paul Hunnam, is tasked with watching the so-called holdovers. So along with Hunnam, the school's head cook Mary Lamb and a 
janitor are also staying on campus as a skeleton crew. So over the course of the break, a connection develops between Hunnam Lamb and one of the students, um, the smart but troubled Angus Tolley, and the dynamic of that trio as it develops is a wonder to behold. Paul Giamatti is the curmudgeon Hunnam, who's the antithesis of a people person. Seriously. Antithesis, yep. Divine Joy Randolph, who uh, many of you may know as the... Uh, the, the, the sarcastic detective on Only Murders in the Building is the kindly but kind of closed off Mary, whose son, a, a student at the school on their scholarship because she doesn't have a lot of money, has just lost his life in Vietnam. And Dominic Sessa in his first movie is Angus, a young man who's been emotionally damaged by family circumstances. I mean, awards season can't come too fast for the three of them with Randolph, particularly a shoe in for best supporting actress nominations. Everything about the holdovers is on point and period perfect. The look, the soundtrack, the costumes, and the aspect ratio uh, and graphics all say early 70s, but it's the script by David Hemmingson, the acting by the entire cast, which also, by the way, includes a delightful Carrie Preston, as well as Gillian Vigman and Tate Donovan, and Payne's assured direction that really make the holdovers a lovely and moving experience. It may even turn out to be a new holiday perennial, insofar as it's set uh, in the Christmas season. Perennial. Despite its chilly 1970 setting, it is a timeless slice of humanity that I heartily encourage you to see. The Holdovers is in theaters this weekend. Wow, you really liked it. I did. It, right. I've seen a couple films in the past week or two, uh, some of which won't be coming out for, uh, you know, days. Yeah, you're sitting on a couple of goodies. I am, me. and okay. this is one of the ones where I went, holy cow, mm. I, I love this film. Let's change the uh, rhythm here. It is Halloween, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, based on an immensely popular video game, Five Nights at Freddy's is about various people being trapped and tormented and tortured in a shuttered, ramshackle, haunted Chuck E. Cheese pizza joint, or, or like a Chuck E. Cheese pizza joint, where the seemingly uh, disabled audio-animatronic robots are deadly killers with a nefarious agenda. Nefarious. Uh, I'm not sure how this figures into the video game, but the movie spends a lot of time with Josh Hutcherson's uh, character. Josh, Josh Hutcherson um, it was in The Hunger Games, and here he plays Mike, a newly hired security guard at the long-closed Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, and his guardianship of his spooky young sister, Abby, is at risk if he can't hold on to the job. So Mike and Abby are orphans. And can I get a boo-hoo? No, okay. Uh, of course, uh, Freddy the robot and his mechanical friends lurk in the dark confines of the restaurant when they're not playing awful 1980s rock hits. This is said in the 80s or 90s. Uh -huh. It's a little unclear. Um, and these songs pepper the soundtrack. If you didn't want to hear Talking in Your Sleep by the Romantics three times over the course of a horror film, please don't go to Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, I see. Well, they like talking in your sleep by the romantics. Okay. They do, but there you go. Anyway. Um, I'm getting that you didn't like I, it. I'm not a big fan. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, could there be a connection between Freddy's and a number of missing children in the area, including Mike's little brother who preceded Abby in birth order? I give you zero guesses about that, okay? Because you just don't need them. Um, Hutcherson is game, as are Elizabeth Lale as cute local cop Vanessa, who seems to know a little too much about Freddy's and a surprisingly shrewish Mary Stuart Masterson, former John Hughes uh, teen movie tomboy cutie, is here as the vile Aunt Jane who wants to boot Mike as Abby's guardian and take over herself and get those checks from the state. You know, oh, how that works. I see. There's yeah. a caper. Yeah. Uh, it's not poorly directed. Uh, by the way, uh, we will. Uh, point this is out a that live action film. It is indeed. Uh, all these people are humans, except for the giant robot creatures, who are probably powered by humans inside or you know controls and stuff. Uh, Emma Tammy was the director of this thing, um, and I would say does an adequate job for sure. It plays out as you might expect, though. There are massive plot holes, a more than sketchy backstory, and we've already seen a Chuck E. Cheese of Doom horror movie two years ago. Willie's Wonderland with Nicolas Cage grimacing and fighting off the deadly animatronics at a defunct family fun center while not uttering much more than a grunt along the way. So who would you rather see in combat against killer robots, Josh Hutcherson or Nick Cage right 
I thought so. Anyway. Well, uh, it's been a couple of years since we've fought them off in a Chuck E. Cheese type place, uh, Michael. It might be time for a new generation uh, to try fighting them off. I, uh, this is in theaters and streaming on Peacock. Lukewarm is what I'm getting. Yeah, from lukewarm. You. Uh, Peacock is a little more palatable uh, as a way to watch this if you're interested. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's wasn't crazy about it, as yeah, should be evident by my conversation here. Um, on the other hand, we do have a horror recommendation for the weekend, one that's way more fun. Fun. Suitable flesh is a tastier treat mm. than Freddy's. It's a very over the top and and get ready, Mark. It's gory, but amusing take on '80s horror movies and erotic thrillers that features Heather Graham, uh, the uh, nubile actress, in all her gl- still nubile by the way, nubile. Uh, uh, in her glory as Elizabeth Derby, who is a psychiatrist dealing with a young patient named Asa who may suffer from multiple personality disorder. At least that's what Dr. Derby thinks, but the truth is way creepier and more delicious as a cult shenanigans involving an evil body leaping creature from eons ago wow. uh, plague Elizabeth and might even enmesh her husband and her BFF fellow psych doctor. So it's set in the world of today, cell phones become integral to the part. But Suitable Flesh is, in fact, based on a story by the master of horror himself, H.P. Lovecraft. Um, In addition to Graham having a ball as uh, Elizabeth, Judah Lewis is a trip as Asa. Bruce Davison is kind of haggard and freaky as Asa's ailing father. And Barbara Crampton, no stranger to this sort of movie, is a nice, even-keeled counterbalance to Graham's imperiled Elizabeth as her aforementioned colleague joe lynch directed suitable flesh with tongue-in-cheek i would guess and the results are more than suitable for laughs and some skin crawling creepiness uh it is in theaters and streaming streaming where uh hither thither and yon you know okay. i, I don't yeah. have to direct you to um, peacock for the other but yeah, no exactly google it and find it google it okay i got it yeah um thank you for aforementioned is a ding word I guess. Uh, well, just quickly, I want to talk about Pain Hustlers, which is the latest movie to try to... Oh, um, uh, yeah, thank you, because I, I, I saw something on it, and I want to ask you how it is. Well, it's okay, but it's yet another movie about the opioid crisis in ways. It's about a pharmaceutical company dealing in uh, fentanyl. powerful uh, fent- fentanyl, uh, fentanyl? Fentanyl, yeah, yeah fentanyl. The style... Um, uh, drugs and it's based on a true story and it's about a in this case um a a, a single mom who's dealing with financial issues Uh, she's done every manner of job in sales and she's also been reduced to pole dancing when she meets um a rep and an executive from a pharmaceutical company who says you know maybe you should try selling drugs and instead of your body legal drugs and so she ends up having quite a knack for it um and it, it the first half of it was really engaging but things get a little off the rails as it goes on i don't want to get into great depth but you have emily blunt giving a typically terrific um performance as liza drake this blue collar mom who takes uh, takes on this gig at the pharmaceutical company um her direct boss is played by um chris evans he's a, a sales rep at the company and of course um The big boss, who gets crazier and crazier as the movie goes on, is played by Andy Garcia. And these folks are just talented actors, and it's fun watching them, and it's an interesting story to a point. But we've seen a lot of stuff lately, um, uh, true life stories about uh, the opioid crisis uh, in miniseries form and in films form. So I feel like this is plowing over some similar ground. Then again, it's on Netflix. If you have a Netflix subscription, Pain Hustlers is not a bad way to kill you know, two hours if you have the time and you don't want to watch Suitable Flesh this weekend <laughs> or, or Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay. Um, anyway, it is in theaters at the moment, but it also started streaming on Netflix today. Um, Suitable Flesh uh, was more my cup of tea, but Pain Hustlers is another kind of horror, right, when you think about it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, as you say, with those performances, those actors, that cast, it'd be worth checking out, maybe. Let's talk about some TV shows, because mm-hmm. we kind of uh, gave them short shrift last week. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, okay, so I'm going to kick things off with Scavenger's Reign. You know I uh, love animation. I work in animation. Uh, my writing partner, who you know, uh, Alan White, talented man, um, and a fellow animation aficionado, said, you've got to watch this new show on Max, which is the former HBO Max. It's called Scavenger's Reign. It is a remarkably beautiful animated sci-fi series about a spaceship that runs into trouble in transit 
forcing a handful of the passengers to eject to an uncharted planet below where they encounter amazing, incredibly bizarre, otherworldly flora and fauna while trying to rescue themselves and their fellow crew members who um, are in stasis within the damaged but still orbiting transport. Stasis. So yep. this has a very European look. It doesn't look like um, Asian anime style, uh, actually. It reminded me a little of the comic book art in Metal Erlon, which was rebranded as Heavy Metal Magazine here in America. Uh, it, it was an influential French science fiction magazine. They still might be publishing it. But uh, whoever conceived of and designed the creatures and vegetation on the planet must have done their research. Uh, because the imagined xenobiology is jaw-dropping and entirely plausible, and the character work is really good by the voice actors. A few who were somewhat familiar, like uh, Aaliyah Shawkat does the voice of one of the women, and Wunmu uh, Musaka from uh, Loki is the voice of one of the other ah. uh, humans that is on the planet trying to figure out how to reconnect with the people above and sure. pr preserve themselves. It's on Max, Scavenger's Reign, High Marks from me, and high marks from Alan as well, just to... Wow, yeah, just who, to, uh, somebody, both of you who know uh, animation quite well. It's it's beautiful. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Bodies is based on a graphic novel. It's on Netflix, and it's an eight-episode thriller about detectives in four different time periods investigating the same murder in London. Same body, same spot, each decades apart. It's a time twisty mystery that kept me engaged throughout. Stephen Graham, who you may remember uh, playing Al Capone in Boardwalk Empire, and if you had the good fortune to see uh, the dramatic look at the uh, turbulent inner workings of an upscale UK restaurant on the brink, Boiling Point, he played the uh, conflicted chef there. Here he plays this enigmatic character who may be the key uh, to this strange situation times enigmatic. four. Uh, bodies, uh, very cool on Netflix. And someone pointed out that I have yet to uh, give props to the second season of Bosch Legacy, which is the sequel series to Bosch about the resourceful, uh, cultured, and wry LA detective Harry Bosch, played to a T by Titus Welliver. Uh, Bosch is kind of the heir to uh, Raymond Chandler's Philip Marlowe character, right? Brought into the right? modern world. Uh, in this case, uh, Mimi Rogers co-stars as his former nemesis turned business partner. Bosch Legacy uh, continues Welliver's uh, hit streak. These shows are so much fun, and if you know anything about Los Angeles, it's a character in the program. And um, I give high marks to Bosch and Bosch Legacy. Nemesis is a ding word, by the way. Uh, really? Uh, yes, really? and I. Uh... We'll quickly review some uh, good stuff today, Michael Snyder. The Culture Blaster really liked The Holdovers. That's the Alexander Payne film, 70s vibe, great performances. And Michael, against the backdrop of terrific work on the part of Alexander Payne, thinks this, The Holdovers, might be his best. What? Well, uh, it's it's all pain, <laughs> all gain. I want, yeah. It's, it's all pain, all gain. Come on. <laughs> anyway, no, I I thought it was really pretty wonderful. Uh, I, you know, it's re it's recency bias. Are you Mark. amending? Oh, I see. Yeah. It's recency bias. All right, yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's. It takes place in a Chuck E. Cheese type pizza place. It's a uh, they're trapped there. Um, it's evil. It's good. It's evil. It's good. But ultimately, tepid uh, is the way yeah, I might yeah. summarize your review. I Give me a were... little clarity on your universe. Why is this happening? What's going on here? Yeah. You don't get very much of that. Weak backstory, flimsy premise, bunch of holes in it. Anyway, theaters and on Peacock. And it, moments of fun. Yeah, you. as I say, tepid. Not awful, but no. tepid. Suitable flesh. He really liked it. Heather Graham and... That crew that goes in that movie with Heather Graham. <laughs> you know, I, it, I forget it, who you mentioned. It's not going to be for everybody. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, Barbara Crampton among them. Uh, but it's an old, it's kind of old schoolish um, right. slasher. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's horror. It's a cult. There's a supernatural element, and it's actually based on a story uh, by uh, the great H.P. Lovecraft. I'm uh, excited about it, Michael. What You're not going to watch it, Mark. <laughs> Pain Hustlers is the Emily Blunt, Chris Evans-led offering. It's on Netflix. It's yet another project that talks about 
uh, opioids. And uh, Andy Garcia is in it. Apparently, all those people I mentioned with great performances. Michael says, look, this soil has been tilled a bunch of times, but these performances are really good. And if you've got Netflix, it's a good way to spend yeah, a couple yeah, the hours. The first half of it is really yeah. uh, very enjoyable and very uh, worth your time. It kind of peters out in, in the middle. Gets a We've little... We've got television for you. Scavenger's Reign, he says, is a beautiful animated sci-fi series. European look. He liked it. He not only liked it, he loved it. I did, and I do. It's halfway through. So that's on... Max. Max, right. Bodies is the Netflix offering. It's an eight-episode thriller. The same murder, the same body, investigated through history, different time periods. That's very intriguing, and Michael really liked it. Why are you yelling? Yeah, please. Uh, settle down, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm swept up okay. with enthusiasm. Why are you yelling? All right. And Bosch Legacy, he just feels is awesome. Continues in the awesomeness of that Bosch Raymond Chandler-ish kind of character meets the modern age. Isn't that a fair summary, Michael Snyder? True that. Both the, the original Bosch series and Bosch Legacy are worth people's time, especially if you like that kind of hard-boiled uh, film noirish. Yeah, uh, private eye kind of stuff. Yeah, love it, love it. Private eye. Oh Los no, Angeles. please, 49ers. The air was please, heavy. Please, 49ers. Please win on Sunday. You've you've What's ruined the, the past two weeks. And the commission also. We were concerned about um, Albert. Thank you. The fact that uh, Brock Purdy was in the concussion protocol. What's the story, Michael? Uh, my understanding is that he's been back at uh, practice. Uh, I don't know if he's been fully cleared. I do know that. Uh, from what I hear, Sam Darnold has taken a, a number of snaps, but Brock mm. Purdy, I think, has been leading the first uh, string. I, we'll see. We'll see. You I, sure will. They're going to have to put the hammer down on Sunday at Levi Stadium. Uh, get this ship righted, 49ers. Yeah. Feels great, baby. We do need to do something. All right. I will uh, excuse the witness if there are no further questions. We appreciate you coming in, Michael. You can find him across social media as the Culture Blaster in the Marina Times as Michael Snyder and on Instagram as Mike the Knife, one, two, three. <laughs> Did I get it all? You got it. How about that? Appreciate it's not written it. anywhere. No, I just know it. That's groovy, man. Yeah, how about that? Uh, he comes and goes. Oh, what a rainbow. Bye, Michael. Snyder. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, my friend. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.